Hello, in this video I'll show you how to establish, set up uh, the Google extension for development. Uh, now Google extension is an HTML kind of an arrangement, JavaScript and CSS of course. Uh, uh, it doesn't really have anything more than a normal HTML page. Uh, it's simple, regular HTML, JavaScript and CSS, but there are restrictions and there is of course a fancy way of setting it up and launching it on Chrome as an actual extension. Now, first of all, you'll need a folder for this, uh, right? You'll need a folder because you will sort of load the folder and you use the stuff from that particular folder throughout the whole uh, program that you will write, the extension that you'll have. Uh, so in this one, I've just prepared four icons, four different sizes of icons, 16 by 16, 48 by 48, and so on. And then we have main view and main view JavaScript file. This one is HTML, the other one is JavaScript. We also have manifest, which is a JSON file. Now main view is what gets uh, basically displayed uh, when you select the extension, the pop-up pops up and you have your extension. This is what you interact with. Uh, and then the JavaScript will contain a functionality for it. Now you should have a separate file uh, you should have a separate file. This is what is uh, required for extensions. So it's a bit weird, but uh, some things uh, can be a bit tricky and weird in this arrangement. Now, the most important piece here is the manifest, right? The manifest file. That is what will handle uh, the loading of that main view. So let's go into the manifest. We are in the Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code, not Visual Studio in this case. So we have, first of all, the name. Let's zoom in a bit better. We have the name. We have description. Some simple, straightforward stuff. You can obviously uh, change these, and you should change these if, if you're going to publish uh, uh, your extension. And then we have version. Version 1.0 and manifest version currently it's free the next thing is permissions okay so you select the permissions that you will need to use uh, active tab scripting there could be more location and things like that uh, you could select them according to your needs and you should reference that in the documentation now i will make uh, another video on the extensions we'll go a bit deeper into actually interacting with stuff and all that uh, but that's for another video. This one is just the setup. Okay, so the next one is action. Okay, action. Now, the action is basically uh, the default page and these icons. That's all we have. You can see right now we set up the icons. Uh, these comes from that uh, uh, local folder. All the icons that I have, the PNG files. Uh, and then we have default pop-up. So default pop-up is the file that pops up when the extension is engaged. In this case, we have mainview.html. Very simple. You select this, uh, it's a starting point of the application. Most arrangements do have that, uh, uh, whether it's a Xamarin application or a WPF application, they have to have some kind of a starting point, main page, main window, things like that. So in this case, it's a default pop-up and you reference your HTML file. That's it. Now the example, the example, it's quite simple really. We have uh, the body and you can see the body has a width, right? We have a width set and you can set it. You can make it as large or as small as you want. Uh, obviously you should be quite careful of that. Uh, uh, because it may not fit and may look weird so you have to be very very careful in fact i would say more careful than you would be with a regular website right and if you want to learn more about uh, website development with uh, c sharp uh, you can take a look at my huge course it's a slow paced course where you will learn api development blazor uh, sql server in one course, also some basics of HTML and CSS. And if you just want to learn basics of HTML and CSS, you can take a look at some of my videos, uh, getting started with HTML and CSS and my JavaScript uh, free course now on YouTube. 
So here we have a uh, fine UTC daytime. This basically displays UTC daytime, nothing fancy here. But we have button and it says find and we have the ID for the button. Now this is something that I actually want to show you. We have the ID for the bottom. We also have the ID for the span, display span. Uh, this will basically, uh, script will be executed, function, and it will display the daytime in here. Now you can see the script is set after the button. We cannot, we cannot put on click event directly here in the HTML on the button. What we need to do instead is go into the JavaScript, okay? And we need to use on click event, uh, establish the on click event, uh, establish the listener or add the listener uh, like this. We get the element by its ID and then we do on click equals the function. That is how you have to do it. You can't do it in line. It will be, it will cause trouble. It will cause trouble. Now, other than that, we have a get time. We have a get element by ID in a text and in the text is set to the UTC uh, day time, to the current day time. A very simple arrangement. Uh, now, if we go into Google Chrome, okay, we go into the Google Chrome and then we need to go and find the extensions. You can see it's already open. I'm gonna show you where to find it. You simply go to more tools and you will see extensions and you'll go into the extensions. This is what it looks like. Usually if you have extensions, you'll have something more added here. But in order to test it, you will need to click on load. And, and once you select uh, your folder, as you can see, my example folder is selected. It doesn't show any items. Uh, that's just how it works. It does indeed have items. You saw them previously, the main view.html and all that stuff. So I select the folder like this. And as you can see, the extension has been added. My little icon is now displayed and I can get the details. I can remove it. And as you can see, it says extension example, version 1.0. You saw the version 1.0. Obviously you can do a different version, whatever version of the, uh, I wouldn't say add-in, it's actually extension uh, there is, right? Uh, and if you want to learn about add-ins, that is Microsoft Office add-ins, you can take a look at one of my courses, uh, Excel add-ins course, uh, PowerPoint or Word add-ins course, all of them are available, great courses, and those are good skills to have. Uh, now, we have all this, that's it. That's all we really need. And if we go here to the left, we see the extensions. You click on that. As you can see, it gets displayed. I click the button and it works perfectly. Okay. Now, if you actually need to publish it, you will need to pack it. Okay. You will need to pack the extension. So you click here. Okay. And this little prompt opens up, right? and you browse for it. I'm just going to select this folder because that is the folder. Okay, and I click pack, pack the uh, extension and it will be packed. Okay, just like that it will be packed. We can go back to the folder and you will see right here, right here, we have the stuff packed. CRX file you get. Now I'm gonna not gonna go into it any deeper. I'm not gonna waste any more time. This is how you set them up for the development. This is how you pack them and uh, you can move forward into various directions after that, I guess. Uh, uh, one more thing to note, you do need to select the developer mode in order to uh, find the, these uh, features where you can actually load and pack and uh, uh, pack the extension. If you don't do that, you don't see anything. So do subscribe to this channel, uh, do access the source code on Patreon, all of the source code for my videos is uh, available on Patreon. And with that, we will conclude this video.